Matthew Davis here from PTZ Optics. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about software versus hardware switching solutions. You know, right off the bat, one of the main things I think that's important to get on the table are the old talking points that you have heard forever and will probably continue to hear for the next few years. So the basic points when you're talking between hardware versus software switching um, are that hardware switchers typically have lower latency and are more reliable, while software switchers add extreme flexibility, uh, accommodating new technologies with ease in a way a hardware switcher can't. I'd kind of like to throw one more option into the mix at this point, though, um, that I feel like doesn't get talked about as often, and that is hybrid solutions, where you're really using each of these, a hardware versus software switcher, where they're meant to be used. The old right tool for the job, don't use a shovel to do the job of a backhoe or vice versa. By the end of this discussion, while you'll see there are true benefits to software, there are true benefits to hardware solutions, uh, what yields the best solution in the end is typically a hybrid setup. So I'd like to just have everyone keep an open mind, um, whether you're just starting to think about production or if you are a long-term veteran of the industry, as we explore these software versus hardware options, uh, just keep an open mind. Um, you know, you might come to find that adding some of these to the mix adds a lot of value to your productions. So let's take a moment and just explore where someone might be getting started as they play with these solutions. So you're wanting to explore production, live or recorded, and you're not really entirely sure your goals yet. You might have a message that you wanna share, but you don't really know all the bits and pieces that go into making that message happen, and not just happen, but be presented in the way you want. This is where I'd highly recommend starting with some software solutions. And you might say, why software? Well, software is typically free um, or very affordable in comparison to their hardware uh, counterparts. Um, so it's a minimal investment in the solutions as you're learning. So we really should take that step back and think about this more of a walking before you run type of scenario. Um, otherwise, you know, it's very easy to invest in a hardware or software solution that may have all sorts of amazing bells and whistles. However, you come to find that it is missing one or two features that your specific production needs. So this is where I like to suggest playing with software to begin with, because a lot of the hardware capabilities are emulated in software. They may not do it as perfectly as the software, but they give you that ability to start playing, to learn, to really understand what you need it to do, and maybe to learn if there are better options available. So as I mentioned, um, you know, we're talking about somebody who's just getting started. What might this look like? I'd probably suggest starting with something like OBS as your software switching and production solution. Why, why OBS? Well, I mean, probably the biggest reason would be its cost to free. Free is not bad. OBS has a lot of add-on modules too, plugins, um, and you can code your own add-ons. If it can't do it, you can usually add to it. Um, and the beauty is as a result of that, you will find a library of options available to you to add on to OBS and learn about all sorts of aspects of live and recorded production. If you install OBS and you add VLC or NDI tools, OBS now can start to interact with more content types um, than it did originally. When you add the plugins, you can start to see the waveforms, do color balancing. Um, and these are just a tiny, tiny handful of the options that exist. Uh, so we can really kind of start to see how flexible a software solution can be, adapting to content it was never originally designed for, or even adding new features. I mean, that's pretty incredible to think about, that you buy it today and tomorrow it can have new capabilities, or in the case of OBS, you're not even having to buy it. So... You know, you may reach this point of playing with OBS and say, wow, this does 
everything I need to share my ideas and hobbies with the world. And you know what? That's awesome. You might not need to go any further than OBS. It might really do everything your production needs. However, you might have other people that reach this point and say, hey, you know, I now know what I'm trying to achieve and would like to make this more reliable, less dependent on Windows or Mac OS. And that's also great. Um, you know, the beauty here is that you're, you're building out something that we call a workflow, whether it's in hardware, software, how you want the production to run. All of these pieces go into play when you're trying to design your system so that you can make sure your system makes your life as easy as possible. Let's return to talking a little bit more about this workflow. Um, so in the second example uh, that we're going to talk about where, you know, they've realized they want to get some PCs out of the mix. Um, they've identified their workflow at this point. And it's really the crucial piece before we can move forward with adding to the produ production equipment or making any adjustments. If we look at a very simple workflow um, from a, a layout perspective, this could be a USB webcam, a USB microphone, a pair of headphones. Maybe you've got a video or two that you want to share during your show. Um, and they're all being brought together, mixed together, switched by OBS. Um, it's simply being streamed out to YouTube or Twitch. All the scene changes are being controlled from the keyboard. This is a, a, a very, very simple system. Um, and you know what? For a lot of people, that system is going to do everything they need. Now, that same workflow can easily grow into pages and pages of complex systems. So this is where it might not only be supporting the content or the production or just multiple cameras, but also overflow rooms, multiple display options around the building. It's shared via multiple platforms, public and private. Uh, maybe they even produce hard content at the end. So this is a prime example of where I truly believe a hybrid deployment would yield the flexibility for this, this individual, this organization to grow and adapt as they need, as new things come about, new requests surface. And if they're doing it truly hybrid, they can also maintain low latency and high quality and reliability where it matters the most. So let's take a moment to explore that concept of hybrid or software where it matters best. So let's see, let's consider a system where they're using an iMag setup with a projector. For anyone who's not familiar, iMag is image magnification and is often where you'll see uh, the talent is up at the front, there's a camera on the talent, and then there's a projection screen or LED wall behind them so that if it's a larger venue, everyone in the venue can see them. Now, in addition to accommodating the in-house um, individuals who will be viewing this, they're also going to be streaming this out via Facebook for those who cannot attend. So we've got two unique end goals here um, that I want people to be aware of. One is streaming the content to Facebook. You know, it could be YouTube, Wowza, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, the second is providing an in-house feed of the talent for everyone who is there in person to enjoy, even if they can't be up close and personal. So while a software solution does keep costs down and can be incredibly flexible, uh, you know, no doubt about it, you can use software to send an image from a camera to a projector and have it projected behind the person but it's likely not going to yield what you're after. It's not, not exactly the right solution for what you're trying to achieve. Uh, and this is for a few reasons. So the number one reason is the latency. Hardware switchers, you know, add minimal latency to the signal chain. Um, and this is why they're desired for scenarios like this, where having ultra low latency is of utmost importance because what's going to happen if you do not have low latency is you're going to see the talent moving and X amount of time later, you see the giant screen do the same thing. 
Um, it can be very distracting and really pull from your presentation. You know, anyone who's experienced it, if you can, would like to avoid. When ultra low latency isn't required though, this is where we could explore those software options. But you know, with the iMag requirement, really this is where an SDI switcher, you know, you really wanna come right off that camera, feed directly into those projectors or projector um, as needed. And so you're able to achieve the absolute minimal latency because there is the minimum amount of equipment in between that coming out of the camera and going into your projector to show up behind the talent. Now, the rest of the production, on the other hand, it is highly likely as it is going out to Facebook, it doesn't have the same strict requirements as the iMag will. So this is where I would suggest starting to explore software switching solutions because they are incredibly cost effective. They still enable an excellent production via platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, the list kind of goes on and on and on and on. The super low latency is no longer really a requirement. I mean, if you think about it with these platforms, you're already at a two second delay to begin with, um, with going live. So really you can start to think about catering your production in a whole different way. Simply capturing the dream and making an appropriate switch is really all you need to do to make a professional showing here uh, with software. You're no, you're no longer trying to accommodate the real world and digital world all in one fell swoop. You're really just catering to the digital world at this point. Uh, so an example of a hybrid switching solution, uh, serving, you know, hardware serving the needs where appropriate and allowing software to handle the rest, uh, which also introduces the ability to easily tinker, to try new things. Um, with software, it's very easy to make minor adjustments and then if you don't like them, revert them. So the idea of, of tinkering uh, becomes very, very easy when it's software in play. Let's take a moment to explore some of the options that you actually have at your fingertips here. So if we're looking at software, you've heard me mention it a few times already, but there's always OBS. Uh, OBS is the most widely used platform in the world. And again, likely that is due to their cost, which is free. They have a wealth of plugins, modules, flexibility to adapt to almost anything going on in the market. Um, it's a great starting point. It's a great learning tool. And for a lot of people, it's a great final destination as well. Now, if you want something that's been a little bit more refined, um, this is where you can start looking at an option like vMix or Wirecast. They take OBS a step further with these options and start to build out sp support for specific hardware um, while still trying to be universal, much like uh, you'll find with OBS, but the result is a more reliable software solution. Though it might not adapt to everything like OBS, you'll find the things that it works with, it works with very well and it works with reliably. These are the solutions you'll find a need for if your productions are a bit more advanced um, or if you simply want to make your lives a little bit easier and less stress-filled. The next option uh, is a little bit odd, but it, it's one step away from being a hardware solution, um, but is almost a true hybrid solution in and of itself. So this product provides extreme reliability and a lot of flexibility all in one box. That box is the new tech TriCaster. So the TriCaster is a Windows based system, but unlike building your own using OBS or vMix, the TriCaster, much like an Apple product, has had their software tuned to work carefully with selected hardware. Uh, what this leads to is truly a more reliable software switching solution. The hardware, the software, the OS, they've all been handpicked and tuned to work with each other rather than leaving anything to the winds of fate. Uh, this product succeeds by locking down firmware, software, and more to versions that support the highest reliability at the lowest latencies. One last thing that software solutions can bring to the table, and I do feel like is worth mentioning, um, that's accommodating new technologies and higher quality content. 
without any major upgrades that will break the bank. So an example might be if we look at migrating to 4K. If you're using software switching solutions, this is likely to simply be maybe a new GPU for your computer, um, maybe an upgraded license for your software. If we take that step back and, and look at a hardware solution, um, you're really having to remove a lot of the equipment. So that SDI or HDMI switcher that handled 108060 is not going to easily be upgraded to accommodate 4K. You're going to need to buy a replacement unit. Uh, if you have any capture devices in the mix, they will need to be upgraded to accommodate 4K. All of your cabling will need to be upgraded to accommodate 4K. As you can imagine, this all adds up very quickly, not just in dollars, but in time to actually retrofit everything. You know, the pluses and minuses to each of these, uh, there are pluses and minuses to each of these options. Um, but those minuses can be minimized if looking to hybridize your setup. So we talked a little bit about software. Let's talk a little bit about um, hardware. Uh, so hardware-based solutions you might easily find in the wild with low latency and high reliability, you know, kind of picking up where the TriCaster leaves off. You might find solutions such as Blackmagic Design, Roland, uh, Grass Valley, all have excellent hardware-based solutions for you to look at. And these are only a, a tiny handful of the options available. Just do your research though. Uh, an inexpensive hardware solution often can lack the qualities that you are looking for in a hardware solution, such as ultra low latency or extreme reliability. So just do your homework before, um, you know, thinking you found a, a, the deal of the century, I would just do a little bit of reading about it as typically the hardware solutions do come with a cost. So these solutions will provide you though with the lowest possible latency, um, you know, using a quality brand. And while not inexpensive, there are typically a variety of quality levels depending on what you need to accommodate. So if you choose the right one for your need, you can usually find something that'll fit a relatively mature budget with ease. What I hope is starting to become clear is that unless you have a very, very large budget to pull from um, or the ability to never need to alter your system, a hybrid solution is likely the best option for most people. Again, you know, it's about taking the time to understand what the right tool to get the job done is um, and then exploring it, you know, spending a little bit of time with it. As an example of what you can do once you've spent a little bit of time, you can start to take the concepts of, of say, a software switcher and now open them up to the world. Um, so you really can start to interact with content worldwide and even bring it into your hardware switching solutions. So, you know, if this is a topic you'd like to learn a little bit more about, just let the organizers of this event know and we can cover it next time. Uh, I hope this information helps you make the right decisions about where to invest your time and money when you're getting started, growing, fine tuning. Um, and really excited to see what some of you are able to put together there out in the wild.